Thank you, Lord. 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 Ooh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right there. Just keep praising the Lord. God has just been too good to us. We've been good, too good to us all week long. We've been too good to us this morning. Right there. In Jesus' name. Holy are you. I'm almost, I'm almost. Thank you, Lord. 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 Blessing us for bringing us this far, Lord. You have not left us. You have not forgotten us. Yet you are here with us and you live in our Bible. We surrender to you, Lord, right now. The victory is yours, Lord, through us. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you as you clear the path right now, Lord. As you make every crooked path straight. Yes, you are, Lord. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Yes, I will. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, God's doing something a little different this morning. For me to do like He tells me to do. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, that's what Bless you, Father. Yes, Lord. Bless you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Bless her, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you for changing her. Thank you. Lord. We thank you for blessing her, my son. My Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord. We just bless our child. We bless her life and before you. It's so precious. Lord, there's so much hope in it. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. No matter what her week was this week, we thank you that thank you cleared the path. Yes. Wow. And you got her here today, Lord. Yes. And she is special, Lord. She's important. Yes. And we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many more, many more. Hallelujah. Many more days. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you right now. We calm everything, Lord. Peace, yes. love, ocean. Be still. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your aunt as well in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You're doing everything and your well pleasing, Lord. Thank you. And your well pleasing. Thank you, Father. Thank you for lifting the burden, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. Oh, son, my poor shit. Thank you, Father. Yes. We bless her, Lord. We thank you for her, Lord. Thank you. Greater years will come, Lord, says the Lord. Great years to come. His peace is on him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. She is the leader of our family. And many will become saved, Lord. Of course, he's not done with you. You are a victor and you're not a victim. Thank you for what you're doing with her, Lord. Everywhere, Lord. Not just Lighthouse, Oh, Lord. Yeah, let's stay right there in prayer, brothers and sisters. This is about the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We just bless you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for peace. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what she's been through, Lord. We thank you for her testimony, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Her grandchildren look up to her. Oh, God, you're worthy of praise. That fire, Lord, that kindles in her now, Lord. It's a, it's a consuming fire, Lord. It cannot be quenched. I love you. We bless you right now, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Father. Woman of God, I just, just say to you this morning, just surrender to God and do it, do his will. Yes, Lord. Do his will. You're not here because of a coincidence. You're here because God led you here this morning. Just do his will in Jesus' name. And your family members will come to know Jesus, Lord, and say, because they're going to see that life that lives in you. 
Yes. So we bless you in Jesus' name this morning as a family of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you. So, so you know your songs are coming in. We just stay that light. We are the light of the world through Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the last hope we have here. We have really no more hope. Check and come in the mail tomorrow, but hey, that don't that don't that don't cover hope, because hope is eternal. Hallelujah. Stay in that gap. Release things. Don't let things stay in the wind. Oh, my gosh. Yes. You call to your family as well. Just know God didn't make no mistakes. We know you're still here for a purpose. Renew her mind, Lord. Help her to release those things, Lord. Those stones and stomach blocks in the way, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Clear the color, Lord. Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. You have a victory. Amen. Hallelujah. You have a victory. Hallelujah. And you know these things. You know these things. But the Lord has to remind us at times. He has to remind us. Hallelujah. It's a renewal of the mind. From this day on, your mind, your mind will be renewed. In Jesus' name, bless you. Bless you. Bless you, brother. You're here for a purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for leading him here. Bless his family. Bless you, Father. Wonderful counsel, wonderful Savior, you all are. He lit in the valley. We'll bite more in the storm. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Hey, brother, just, just thank God for you. He just showed me you're the last one left in your family. But stand strong and keep the faith. Family members need you and they, they will listen to you. Keep them strong, Lord. We thank you for him. He's a legend of you. First John 4 and 4 says, Great is he that's in you, and he is in this world. And it says in the very first part of it, it says, uh, in the very first part, it talks about little children. You're not of them. And he said, but great is he that's in you, that he is in this world. You're greater. You're greater than you. Thank you all through Christ. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. Peace right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for healing his wife, Lord. It's not too late. Yes. This is a season of miracles, sudden miracles. Yes. And we bless you, Lord. Yes. Prayers are not in vain because you hear the prayer. Thank you, Lord. And you have not wasted any time. The Lord showed that to me. To me. You, there's no time been wasted. Everything's been valuable. And he's pleased with it. <coughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. Bless you, young man. Thank you, Lord. We just pray for him. We bless him, Lord. We thank you, Lord. He has a bright future ahead of him because he's called by you, Lord, and you have a purpose on his life. And you said many are called, but few are chosen. And he's one of the ones that's chosen you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that he's going to be a great advisor to his peers at school. And Jesus, thank you right now, Lord. We bless him, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Many sermons he's going to give you if you actually already have in you. And God has great ability in it. We thank you, Lord, for using him here in the uh, this area here in the church. We thank you, Lord. Bless you, Father. Bless you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Peace be still, Lord. Peace be still to you, young man. Uh, it, it, no prayer pressure takes place, but it don't have to be in your way. You start speaking the word, and it'll leave. Strongholds may try to come, but to God be the glory, you can break them. Because you're a warrior just like the rest of us is. Hallelujah. You're going to do great things in sports, too. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Continue to bless you and your family in Jesus' name. Rise up, man of God. Rise up, God. I got many things for you. Rise up, man of God. Rise up in Jesus' name. Uh, we can stand in the gap and pray. Keep your sons in prayer. They'll come to the Lord. They'll come and God has removed He has removed the stumbling stones. Bless you. Come on, Lord. Bless you. God wants you to stay strong and stay faithful. Seems like faith, faithfulness tries to leave you, but God got you. Stay in his hands, brother. In Jesus' name, peace be still right now. That everything is, is in the way of you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Bring us to come, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just bless our leader here. We thank you for him, one of your generals. And we just thank you as you lead him and guide him to, 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 do, to bring many souls in and to lead other leaders to become leaders that you called them to be. Thank you, Lord, for the Joshua generation that's rising in you right now. Thank you, Lord, that he won't bend, and he won't bite, and he won't run and run. But he is for you, Lord. Yes. And Jesus that greater is to come. Hallelujah, yes. Lord. Bless you, Lord. We should go go ahead and praise God this morning and we thank Him for another week. Um, before we get into prayer, get into uh, worship and praise and prayer, the, uh, we just want to clear, clear our minds and clutter and different things that we may have occurred this week. And you may have your mind on it right now, but let's just clear our minds right now because God wants your full sacrifice in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord. Clear their minds right now. Clear their hearts. Clear our minds, Lord. Clear mind, Jesus. Hallelujah. Where we can be able to receive from you what you have today. In Jesus' name, Lord. Praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. Father, I just come against the spirit I saw earlier. Lord, I come against any other spirits, Lord God. About you may not have shown we thank you, we bless you right now for your word. Yes. But you Lord, you said you should stand at last. I know my redeemer liveth, but you shall stand at last. You shall stand at last, Lord. Help us to believe the word and walk in the word for what it is, Lord. Yes. Greater is to come, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. We you know we don't have an assignment, Lord. Lord, that one of the greatest assignments you show me, Lord. Is prayer, witnessing, and living for you, Lord. Yeah. And we just yeah. thank you right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you, Father. We bless you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, we bless the man bringing the word. Thank you, Lord. God be the glory. Um, what I, I believe the Lord had gave me, I just actually just got it back there worshiping. 
uh, a title. I usually don't give title a month because you got to prepare the vessel and let him send the message. You know, uh, you can prepare a sermon after sermon after sermon, but it ain't going to ever get really straight until you allow God to give you the sermon because he's the messenger. We're supposed to deliver the message. Uh, I believe uh, the, the title that I gave earlier was uh, uh, Confession and Choice. Confession and Choice. We know out of the mouth comes confession. Um, let's go to uh, Proverbs, the 15th chapter, verse 4. I'm going to start at verse 1, make it uh, help clarify it through the Spirit of God more. Proverbs chapter 15. The main verse is going to be four, but all of it makes sense, starting at verse 1. Proverbs chapter 15, uh, verse 1. <coughs> the word wholesome is one of the words we want, we want to look at. Uh, it talks about wholesome. Wholesome means a gent being gentle, uh, being healthy, being positive. A healthy being. Okay, let's see. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up uh, stir up anger. Uh, one of the things I, I've learned from that, uh, no matter what the situation is, uh, when we when we dealing with something, we don't we need to go into it with the peace of God and be able to answer in the way God will want, and not just jumping and yelling and. It just like if something just happened, say for instance, somebody um, um, coming in our face to our young house, and we really don't know the reason why, or we may know the reason why, we need to come in with a soft, gentle answer. Right. And just, I'm like, okay, whatever you're saying, just really just let the peace of God take over us. Because one thing I've learned about us as believers in Christ we have to be the peacemakers, not the mess starters. That's what happens. Peacemakers is what we need to be. You know, uh, one of the most uh, deepest things I've learned in the body of Christ is 90% uh, of the body of Christ is the mouth, is, is gossip. 90% of the problem in the body of Christ is the mouth. You know, that's one of the biggest things and if we just stop and let the Spirit of God roll through us and think, we'll be able to uh, accomplish and do things better. Amen. Verse 2 says, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge. All right. But the mouth of fools pour out foolishness. Yeah. So there right there, you see a little bit of what the Lord just showed me there. We can't be fools no. because God, he can't fill a fool. He just let a fool just rob him, just, just talk, just talk. But he can hear the wise. But the thing is, with that, I've learned, you know, as a natural man or woman, we can have wisdom. We can have understanding. We can have knowledge. But we have to have God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding right there with us. Amen. You know, I learned a lot about uh, um, self-motivation. Okay, self-motivation is good. Yeah, but you need God's motivation to come in you with the word and we feel that and, and overcome it because self-motivation can bring pride, can bring uh, ignorance, it can bring uh, in, uh, envy, it can bring different things and have you thinking uh, that you're greater. And I've seen people with so much self-motivation in them, especially a change they made in their life, and they did some more of it with God and they did some of it without him at all. And I've shown some to never do it God, you know, without God. But they get, they get that self motivation mode built up in them, and then they become to have self worship toward right. themselves. Right. Bodybuilders are real bad. At it. They just they, they know that they think because they made that change, or they think because they've been in the weight room or, or track star all their lives, yeah. they just get built up. A lot of uh, celebrities are. Uh, 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 um, Players, NBA players, and 
golf and football. We right. see that urgency and all that in them all the time. Right. And they can motivate themselves every day. Right. You know, some of them even tell you the money don't motivate them, but they motivate themselves, you know. But when it comes down to it, at the end, you're going to need God. Right. When you don't have that money, when you don't have that uh, that pleasure in life no more, you're going to need God. Right. That's the very greatest motivation you could really, really ever have. So it's just saying it, don't become foolish. Yes. Don't become foolish. Verse chapter 3, verse 3 says, the eyes of the Lord are upon are in every place. Yes. So no matter what, yeah. we ain't got away with nothing. That's right. I mean, yeah. nothing. The eyes of the Lord is everywhere. Yeah. It talks about that in 2 Chronicles 16. Yeah. Yeah. It says the eyes of the Lord searching ground about the earth. Right. You know, it's, it's seeing everything that we do. Yeah. You know, good or bad. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I've, been, I've been taught by, by our mentor himself, he talked about, you know, you see that word good, but good don't always mean God's good. Right. You know, just take the word G-O-D, God, and take the word good and put another O in it. God represents good, but it has to be his his type of good. You know what I'm saying? I can uh, get up every morning and exercise, but I don't put God in that good. It's good to exercise, though. It right. really is. Uh, they talk about that in Titus and Timothy, bodily exercise. It is good, but it says it's not good enough because you have to profit in the exercise of, of God's uh, type of work. His, his, his ability of getting in his word, sharing the word with somebody, getting in his prayer, uh, focusing on God, and, and just different other things, and living for him. Living for him is really the main thing, uh, as he showed me earlier in that. Okay? Uh, the eyes of the Lord are, are in every place. Beholding the evil and the good. Right. Notice it said that word good again. Good. Is, but is it God's good? Is it his good? You know. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverse perverseness therein is a branch in the spirit. A breach or a breach, a breach in the spirit, excuse me. And we see the uh, perverse is, is, is uh, from what is good, stubborn. It turns from good to bad. It goes into stubbornness, unruliness, resistance to guidance, uh, or non-discipline at all. Lack of responsibility. That's what perverseness means. Yes. The breach, we know what a breach is. Breach is pretty much a gap or opening. And that could be spiritually as well as naturally, too. Uh, a wound or, or, or disagree, a wound or disagreement or a, a mistake, a misunderstanding. So a breach can come in a conversation. Yeah. You're sitting there talking about something good, then something negative come in, and somebody just throws in, throws something negative in there, right. and other tongue says it all just throw it out of portion. Yeah. So we have to live a, a, a gentle life. We have to have a wholesome tongue. Actually, gentle is part of um, one of the fruit of the spirit. It's actually one of the fruits of the spirit. You know, I was telling, uh, uh, I was talking, uh, I believe, on uh, on, on the uh, podcast, uh, not podcast, uh, the YouTube channel called uh, 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 the, the Preeminence uh, YouTube channel the other day. I was talking on it. And one thing I learned about, the pre uh, about his preeminence, his preeminence is far beyond the world. We can't even fathom the preeminence of God. It's, it's just so awesome. But one thing I was saying on there, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not just the tongues, the knowledge, the prophecy, the healing, the miracles. It's also the fruit of the Spirit, the ones that the church don't hardly even talk about. Because when, well, when it comes down to it, you're going to face those before you use anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you go to work, well, how are you going to be able to do when that boss comes up there and start yelling at you? How are you going to do when you get behind your paperwork or mistakes right. start happening? Right. Uh, w w are you going to say stuff you not you don't have no business saying? Right. So you, before you know it, you got to have the, the fruit of the Spirit. It's got to be the, the first thing to, to me before it is anything else. Right. Also, those other gifts in Romans chapter 12, people leave those out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got um, the mercy. And you know what I'm saying? The one thing I learned about mercy, I was reading uh, Ephesians, and it said, the riches of his glory 
and then said, riches of his mercy. And I started really getting deep in the spirit. I was like, oh, God, mercy, Lord. You're really saying something here in this scripture to Apostle Paul. Mercy never stops. It goes forever and ever and ever. Money stops. You know what I'm saying? All this other material stuff, it stops. But mercy never stops. Happiness never stops. Joy never stops. Gladness never stops. If you look at uh, 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 Galatians chapter um, uh, 5, 22 and 23, notice that there's no law in them. <laughs> I still now looked at that like, sometimes you just got to take one or two scriptures and just meditate on it. Meditate. You don't have to go and read you know, 10 different scriptures. Look, and I just noticed it, his mercy is everlasting. Right. His truth is doing to all generations. Yeah. Everything with the Lord thy God is forever. Right. It is eternal. It never stops. Right. Nothing. I'm telling you, so the fruit of the Spirit is going to continuously live on. That's right. You know what I'm saying? When houses are gone, right. yeah. when clothing is gone, when cars are gone, yeah. the fruit of the Spirit is going to constantly just keep right on going. Yeah. And I'm telling you, the fruit of the spirit is a guaranteed fact in your life. <laughs> I, you know, I just I looked at the riches of his glory and the riches of the glory, and I, it just some just, and his spirit just started forming up in me. Right. I said, Lord, the riches of glory is just really awesome. Right. And I used to hear my mentor, uh, Brother Fletcher, used to say it all the time, over and over and over. He go to word, and, and he's trying to he was trying to tell us to regurgitate the word, right. just like a cow eats grass. Right. They swallow it back up. They continue to chew it yeah. and chew on it and chew on it. So sometimes you have to take scripture right. and keep reading it over and right. over and over. That's well, right. Lord, I don't understand it. See, that's where you mess up at because out of the mouth comes confession. We're going to go to Romans 10. Wow. And I'm going to show you a little bit more of what God showed me in Romans 10. It's not always just talking about salvation, but it is talking about the way we talk. Yes. See, a wholesome tongue is the tree of life. A healthy tongue, a healthy being tongue. We have to have a healthy being tongue, uh, a good language. Good language is another one. We got to be positive. We got to uh, ask. Sometimes we get up in the morning, but the first thing you do is you need to really think, do is just thank you, Lord, for another day. Amen. Thank God for another day. And before we even start thinking and talking, because it starts with the mind first. The mind is the battlefield. Right. I'm telling you, it's the battlefield. But the battle is won in Christ yeah. when we lay. So the first thing we do get up in the morning before we start thinking about I got to go to work or somebody been getting on my nerves or I got to go get up and go do this. I don't want to get up. I want to lay down. First thing we need to do is like, Lord, give me something to think positive. Yeah. You tell me what to say and what to think and I start thinking. But first thing is thank God for that day. Yeah. So that day was not promised. That's right. That's you right. don't have to see it. We don't know how many people they didn't wake up this morning. That's right. Amen. We don't know that. We don't know who, who left us. Some of us might know somebody left us, but uh, we don't know who died. That's right. We don't know who left us this morning. So the first thing I noticed in scripture, it said, uh, give God thanks, prayer, thanksgiving, and supplication. Right. He noticed he said that further. He didn't say, give me something new, Lord, or give me some money. It said, prayer, supplication. Prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. That's the first thing. When you get up and say thank you, Lord, for another day, that is a prayer. It don't have to be necessary. Right. Father God and Jesus, that we thank you for bless us. You know, that, that, that thank you is a prayer right there. Right. That's one of the greatest weapons the Lord showed me back in 2022. He said, your thank you, son, is going to be your greatest weapon. Wow. I need you to start being having gratitude and saying thank you for everything. Amen. Even when you get up and you don't understand it, even when somebody make you mad, even when you, somebody get on your nerves, or you even stomp your toe and make a mistake, thank you. Thank I need you to end it with thank you. Thank and if he need you to praise me, I need you to worship me. No matter what he said, go right on. Yeah. Go right on with that. Quit letting yeah. stuff stop you in your track. Yes. And he said, he told 2023 years, I need to really uh, start facing things, yeah. not trying to make a way of escape. I'm standing in front of it like this, and I see it, and I just, okay, I, I just do that later. <laughs> no, he don't want me to do that. That's right. He, don't want me, he, he told me to start facing things and just dealing with it. Yeah. If, if you get complicated about it, start asking for wisdom. Yeah. 
Yes. He said, I'm here. Yes. Wait, he said, when, we knew, when I was praying, I'd be praying. He said, Lord, come, come right now. Come, Lord. He said, son, I'm here. Yeah. Yes. You need to open your mouth and talk to me. Oh, and don't many mouth me. And just talk <laughs> and just begin to just flow and really flow and flow. Flow in the spirit. And I said, well, Lord, let me make sure you're saying this. I don't want to just start talking over you. Well, this is your time to talk. So go ahead and talk. Right. He tells me that. Then I will answer, and then I will come in, and I'll start showing you revelation, wow. wisdom, and knowledge, you know. One thing I learned about um, um, the 72 uh, disciples, you got to remember Moses had 72 uh, uh, followers too, but the 72 uh, leaders, I learned something about that. Uh, 72 disciples Jesus had at one time in John chapter 6. Uh, John, God showed me something. I went to Mark 3 and 16 yesterday and I was reading it. It said 12 disciples. Okay, Lord, I know there's 12 disciples. Okay. Then he reminded me of John 6, where the 72 disciples were. Remember, the 12 disciples were the chosen disciples. The 72 really just came along and joined him. And I remember something my uh my mentor, Brother Fletcher, said one time when he was teaching, he was saying when Legion got that demon cast out of him back in Mark 5, at the very end, he said, Lord, let me join you and follow you. He said, you go home. Don't follow me. Go be with your people. The Lord showed me in that with them 72 apostles to make it short. They actually said a lot to me on that one. He said, those guys just fall, started following me. But when it got down deep and deeper and deeper and they get closer to me, when I just said one word and they won't run away from me. Right. When he said in that script, he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Right. That was a revelation knowledge right. to get deeper and closer with him. He did not say anything about cannibalism. That's, That's right. the first thing they started thinking. This man taught my cannibalism. Right. Offering his body to, to God and, and us for us to eat them. And he, and he showed me there are many who, when it gets, they start getting real deep and close to me, he said, Many of them, this is what they do today, son. They walk right away. Because right. they don't understand the pressure. They don't understand you in some water. And in the spirit, you're in water. And the water gets deep and deep and deep. Right. And that's just an example. And the, the lower you go, the deeper you get in the ocean. Or, right. you know, and the water represents the spirit. As you go deeper and deeper in the ocean, things going to get tighter and tighter. Right. Growth demands change. Yeah, right. When you're changing, it is not going to be easy. Right. But you can say you, you can do all things through Christ. Who think. That's the only scripture you say, Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. No matter how hard, how tight, how deep it gets, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. And you have to keep pounding and keep saying it. Or even say, oh, you're not going to make it. Sometimes right. your flesh will tell you. Right. Yeah. That's why the confidence got to be built up in the Holy Spirit. Amen. The, wholesome, the wholesome tongue is the tree of life. Yeah, it is a gentle tongue is a tree of life. You know what I'm saying? Remember what the tree of life was? It was in the middle of the garden and told Adam and Eve. That was uh, uh, all those trees you can touch of except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the tree of life was there. And, and he said, but perverse, perversion is, is it breaks the spirit. Okay. I remember uh, uh, Evangelist Perry Stone was talking about you can break a horse, but when you break the horse spirit, you lose him. Yeah, right. So I let something learn more about it on horses. I do like wildlife a lot, but uh, I, I was sitting and I thought about that. I said, break the spirit. Okay. But that's a deep, different teaching in it. But, you know, uh, the tree of life was in the middle of the garden as well as the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And God told them not to do it, and they still touched it anyway. And I used to would, would blame Adam for all this drama and stuff going on in the world. Uh, you know, Adam, if he just wouldn't have ate the forbidden fruit. And I just, I was, this is when I was real young. I would just complain all the time. But, you know, when it comes down to life itself, it's a choice that you make. A choice. You make that choice to do what you just did. Come on, yes. You know what I'm saying? The, the three, three, three verses in this in the world. Number one is you. I know nobody likes that, but number yes. one, you are the first enemy. Yes. Yes. You got to get up and look in that mirror every day if you look yes. in the mirror. Yes. 
but you still got to face situations, circumstances, situations. The first thing is you. Yes. You're, you're the first enemy. And number two is people. Sometimes people can get in your way. Yes. Sometimes yes. people can really get on your nerves. Yes. Sometimes people can block you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Number three, Satan. Yes. John 10 and 10 says, uh, the thief cometh, but the kill still and destroy. Yes, but Jesus came that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. Amen. And you think about what it says in Psalms, it talks about uh, the only thing hard in life is making a choice of iniquity. Living an, uh, an iniquity is a sin. Sin. And uh, uh, the way of a transgressor, there it is, thank you, Lord. The way of a transgressor is hard. Yes. But, the, but the way of Christ is easy. Yes. It may not seem easy, but it's actually easy yes. in Him. You know, what? of course we go through. But the way of Christ is easier. And notice in that scripture, kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. That's the choices of sin. Satan wants, that's the only power he gets when somebody sins. Because he don't have power over you. Yes. You just realize that he yes. don't have power. Yes, he had dominion power over this earth. But he had no power over any one of us in it. Yes. Satan had no power. So, I, I want to encourage you today. You may know. Satan has nothing over you. He's under your feet. Yes. As a believer, yes. if you're a believer in Christ, he's under your feet. Yes. Yeah, he had dominion power over this world, but he don't have it over the believer. And when Jesus died on the cross, Amen. he did a purpose. Yes. He made he made it clear and free for all of us. Every one of us. He made it free for every one of us to, to accomplish, to have victory, to uh uh to have everything in the spirit as well as the natural. First the spirit, then the natural. You know, so we we are more than conquerors. That word doesn't Amen. just say that for nothing. Right. One thing I've learned last year, three other words he gave me. He gave me fight, war, and conquer. Yes. Okay. Every day is almost a fight. Not every day, but majority of the time we fight and we got to fight something right. in life. We got to right. fight. Number two, war. Sometimes when you fight and defeat a situation, it want to make try to come back and bring war with you and against you. Yes. Yeah. But you got to remember uh, Romans chapter 8, 37, nay, in all these things, you are more than conquerors That's through right. him that love you. Amen. So it's through Jesus Christ who love you, you're still a conqueror. Yeah. So fight, war, and conquer is one of the three things he, he gave me uh, back in 2023. So yeah. it, it's going to be a fight in this life. Spirit, if it ain't in the natural, it's in the spiritual. Yes. You know what I'm saying? When somebody start acting up and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Begin to pray. Yes. Don't don't take your natural fight. Right. You know what? I'm going to let them know. I'm going to give them peace of my mind. Yes. That's not always a good choice. You have to be straight and honest with them out of love of God. Right. But but ask God to give you the word to say. I right. guarantee you, he will surprise you with that. Yes. Proverbs chapter 8, uh, um, I believe, uh, verse uh, 12. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. Thank you, Lord. Wisdom and authority. I, and this is when Solomon, uh, only thing he asked the Lord God for was wisdom. Right. He didn't want riches. He didn't want honor. He, all he wanted, he wanted was wisdom. Yes. And uh, when soon as he called wisdom, called and said God wisdom, wisdom was up in heaven waiting on Solomon. So it came down to the earth and it was manifest. Notice we can call things as, as they are. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Call those things which are not as though they were. Romans 4 and 17 talks about that. But you have to read verse 16 too in Romans 4 to get more understanding of what it's saying there. But uh, and I will go to that scripture here soon, but we didn't need to stay right here where we are. Like you can go all over the place, but you want to stay in line with the Spirit. I ask God to give me balance. Okay, wisdom and authority. Our wisdom. Notice it says, I wisdom dwells with prudence and finds out knowledge of willity inv invasions. The fear of the Lord is, the, is, is to hate pride and ignorance and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. 
you know, three times four mouth is not just talking about gossipers. Just talking about people that just just all the time talking, not letting God uh, say anything to them, or, or just not being quiet and, and and making the right choices in life. Okay, verse fourteen says, "Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength." Thank you, Lord. So through wisdom, we have strength. And we want anything, any counsel in this life, we need We need to ask for God's counsel. That's the first counsel we need. When we in prayer, uh, we in counseling. You know, three words the Lord, he gave me early in the week. He gave me prayer, meditation, and dedication. Okay, when you truly pray from the heart, you're talking to the Lord. You're talking to him. And when it's truly from the heart, uh, uh, you can begin to meditate. You know what I'm saying? Like I was telling a, a prophetess earlier, I was saying to her uh, that uh, when you're not praying, praying, prayer is still going on. <laughs> Somebody in this world is praying. But you got to remember uh, Hebrews 7 25 talks about uh, Jesus is making intercession right now for us. Right. He's constantly praying right now yeah. in Hebrews 7 25. So when, pray, when you stop praying, you know, just know somebody else is praying. Because right. prayers are it was the greatest exercise we could ever have. And when we can constantly pray all day, that's meditation. We need meditation. I'm talking about not this new age stuff. I'm talking about meditation in the Lord. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? So you bring counsel. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I, am, I understand. I have strength. And another thing I've learned about counsel, um, God will come to you even uh, when you just in an uproar about things. He'll come to you, and he also will come to you, especially when you're in self-control. So that's, remember, that's another fruit of the Spirit. Okay, by me, kings reign, and princes, princes decree uh, justice. By me, princes rule and noble, even all the ju judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. And that's how, you know, that's not necessarily always talking about first thing you have in the morning, pray to God, always coming to God before you make a decision. You may be wanting a house, you want to get one to get built out in, the, out in the country. And it's slightly one of my goals. I'm, I'm going to God before I go make any decision. You know, so that's why you know that you said to her, seek me early. You know, they don't ask that mean early in the morning before you make a decision. Right. Get the counsel from God. That's what verse 14 talks about. Counsel is mine, you know, but you you want to just stay constantly in prayer and meditation and focusing. You know, you want to keep focusing early. Shall I find me? Hallelujah. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, riches and righteousness. So the riches is not talking about money, but it's talking about the riches of his glory. You know what I'm saying? So money is part of it, but money is really just an earthly thing. But yes, the, the men and women, we do need the money, but we need God before we need anything. Because when that money is gone, God's going to still be there if you'll let him. It's all by choice. Mm -hmm. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my renewed than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment. So he leads the way of righteousness. Righteousness is another word for his right standing. Walking, walk, walking with God willingly. That I may, verse 21, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will find, I will feel their treasure. Hallelujah. So his treasure is eternal. Remember that. It's not temporary. Everything with God is eternal. We have to be in agreement with it and believe God can do it. Everything is in touch that I may call those who love me. Notice it said that inherited substance, and I will fill uh, their treasure. Romans 8 uh, uh, 28 says, 
Let's go there, Romans 8 and 28. And we know that we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord according to his purpose. Notice it said according to his purpose, not ours, but we have to love God. You know what I'm saying? He will help us love us if we don't think we, we love him enough. He'll help us love us. He'll help us love us. So I just wanted you to show you that in there. It's just a little bit of an example from Psalms, uh, the Proverbs 8. But all of that, Romans 8, is real good. And I was reading to you all ago, all knowing they and all these things were more than conquerors to him that love us. Notice that. And 29, 30 is good. But let's go to uh, the chapter 10, where it talks about confession. But what said it? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word which of faith which we preach. It takes faith to do everything. It takes faith to get up in the morning. It takes faith to eat. It takes faith to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? It takes faith to even have peace. So it, as we were saying, but what said it? You know, he said the word is not thee. The word, when it says not thee, it means near thee. The word is near thee, it, 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 and it's in your mouth, it's in your heart. One thing I learned from the full revelation of God through uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, he was saying in our heart. A lot of people like to use the word mind, but in God, the heart is the mind. They're all one. And uh, for I was like, this brother was telling me on the phone, I said, I heard you, but I need to go on the scripture and find this out for myself. Mm -hmm. I heard you saying, I understand the heart is the mind. It all, it's all one in God. But I need to know for myself. But the mind is the one that's terrible thing to waste. Mm -hmm. But, you know, cause, and, you know, I, I was just saying that to him. Finally, I seen the scripture for myself. You got to look at the word by revelation knowledge. God shows you many things in the word, and it's deep. Sometimes it's not just that word that you read there. You know, it's also through the revelation knowledge of him. So the heart uh, is, is what God wants. That's what he reaches. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, confession with the mouth, when you need God's help and you don't want to say nothing, God is there, but he's waiting on you to open your mouth and confess and say, Lord, I need your help. I'm really struggling. Uh, sometimes it takes me, it used to take me hours to ask God to help me. And I'd be at work and I'd be up there struggling at work on the, on the machine I run. And I, sometimes it takes me a while. I said, Lord, create me in a clean. Finally, I just finally would say it. And see, the scripture said, create me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. In you know, Psalm 51. So I finally say, Lord Jesus, and say, Lord, just waiting on you to open up. There's something he's been teaching me how to trust him and how to open up before him on everything. Don't leave him out of nothing. That's right. Colossians 3 and 17 says, every word, every deed, do it unto the name of the Lord. Yeah. Verse 24 says, do things wholeheartedly. Do it with a full heart. Don't halfway do stuff. Right. Amen. Amen. So thou, if thou con shall confess with thy mouth, Jesus is the Lord, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, that I shall be saved. Okay. One thing I learned from this right here, of course, this is talking about salvation, enter, enter Jesus in into your heart, and you confess and believe. But this also means for basic things, too. Like if you need something from the Lord, just open your mouth and ask Him to come help you. You know what I'm saying? Or just say, Thank you, Lord, or begin to praise Him. This is one thing He's dealing with me at work on. He was telling me, uh, all throughout the day, son, I need you to say, thank you, Lord. Praise me. Just continue to do it out the day. I said, well, Lord, what if it slipped my mind? I need you to continue to praise me. And that's all he was saying. I said, okay, I sure will. And this is this right here is the same thing as confession. 
Thank you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I'm in a hard place right now, but Lord, you are able to do anything but fail. I remember Reverend, uh, uh, Abraham. Abraham was talking to the Lord. And Sarah, his wife, heard him talking to the Lord. <laughs> and she said, uh, she laughed at him. And God confronted her in a, in a sweet way. He confronted her. And, uh, uh, and Abraham, the Lord asked Abraham in Genesis uh, 14, I believe. He says, is anything too hard for God? Right. He asked Abraham that. And he wanted to know what Abraham's answer was. And uh, Abraham paused. But that, that's the revelation God has gave me. He said, no matter what this situation looks like right in front of your natural eyes, remember, you have spiritual eyes too. Your eyes are supposed to be with mine in one. Right. So you need to not even say that word hard. I know we probably say it, but I don't say hard. I say sometimes it may be difficult, but it's nothing ever too hard for God. I mean, nothing. He said, do not use that word hard. Because I asked Abraham, remember, you have to have my language, God's language. He said, he, he told me to ask, he said, is anything too hard for God? Ask yourself that song. He said, look at the situation before you. Somebody that, that hadn't gotten right with Jesus at all, and they still living a rough life. Ask if it's too hard for me to say this. Wow, right. Ask if, if that person with no leg, can I not go it back? Wow. Ask me. He okay. said, if anything too hard, ask me if you know that person is rebellious, but then sometimes they're good. And what I'm saying is mental, good spirit, bad spirit one day, sweet another day. You know what I'm saying? Ask me, is it anything too hard? Can I change that person? Yeah. Okay. What your eyes see right. is what I want you to see in my eyes that I can do. Yeah. All things through Christ who strengthen me. There's nothing too hard for me. Yeah. And he, he had to remind me of that. He kept, he, he had been, he, for one whole year almost, he told me that. He said, is there anything too hard for God? Don't say that word hard. Just like here's another one. Confession. We talk a little bit about confession, and then the choice we make after we made a confession. Because it starts with the mind first, it gets in the heart, eventually it's going to come out the mouth. Right. This is one reason why I'm reading Romans 10. I know we look at it as salvation, but when I finish the rest of it, you're going to see what the Spirit of the Lord is showing me. My brother yeah. Mitchell, the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, I can uh, tell you, well, I hate the way they do stuff. And every time I see you, I can tell you, I hate the way you do stuff. I, I hate the way. Eventually, my heart is going to turn into, that part is going to start hating. Right, right. Because out of my confession, I shouldn't be hating. So I, I, I dislike it. The Lord, help me where my wrong is. That should be the confession, God's type of language. I hear people say that all the time. Oh, I hate this. I hate that. Oh, I hate this job. Okay? You're going to hate your job. You're going to have yourself fired eventually. Right. Something's just gonna pop up and happen. You gonna be like, and then when you out of out of work, you gonna be like, I missed my job. Yeah. Well, what happened? What happened? That's just an example of confession. Yeah. Just just having the language of God, right. knowing yeah. what to say, yeah. asking God. He wants to lead you uh, 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 with your mouth. You know, He wants to lead you. Uh, uh, here's one scripture right here. Just go to it right quick. We're not trying to go to a lot of scriptures here. Luke four and four. Luke 4 and 4 and Matthew 4 and 4. And this is the same thing uh, uh, Moses said in uh, Deuteronomy 8. All Jesus is doing is repeating what the Spirit of the Lord said through, uh, through, the, uh, through, the, uh, through the, the prophets before him. And Jesus said to him, It is written that man should not live by bread alone, but every word to the seed out the mouth of God, but every word of God, but every word of God, every word of God should be coming out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. We may not be there yet, but say you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Right. Just right. confess that. That's all the scripture you know to say. It. Because one thing about God, He ain't got to use tricks, gimmicks, right. schemes. He ain't got to use magic. Right. Yeah, all He need to do is say His word. Yeah. But He wants that word programming us when we are saying. But only through the Holy Spirit, like I was uh, saying, saying earlier, uh, uh, Sister Angie, uh, Miss Banji, I was saying earlier to her uh, that, uh, uh, that through Christ, he's the only one. But 
he wants to be the, the person that's talking to us. Right. You know, our opinions are great, but when it comes down to it, as I learned from my leader himself, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, really taught him uh, the truth don't have to change his clothes. The truth is the truth, and it stands only by itself. Yes. There are no other words to stand with the truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lie is a lie. It's the opposite of the truth. Opinion, sometimes it's gossip or hearsay. A fact is sometimes a fact is heading toward the truth. Sometimes it is the truth, but it's not the full truth. Right. Truth stands only by itself, yes, and that's it. Uh, the, where the sun set me free, we are free indeed. Romans 8 and 36 talks about that. You should know the truth, and the truth should set you free. Romans 8 and 32. So, uh, you know, we have to just face the truth. That every word of God is true. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So God has to be the one to lead us in the, what the words we say. You know, I know sometimes things get itchy and you want to just say something. But sometimes that situation may be true about that person that you talking about or looking at across the room. Just say, you know what, I ain't getting in there. I ain't getting out of Walk away from it if you have to. Because sometimes information gets itchy, itchy, and you be like, well, you know, that's kind of interesting what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Or even President Biden, many people talk bad about him since he's been in the White House. But I bless Pre President Biden. I bless every leader. God did appoint them. Romans 13 talks about that. When God appoints somebody, you just pray for them and bless them. Who are them? No matter what your opinion is. Right. So that's an example of opinion. You know, when, that's like when Trump was in the White House. That's an example of opinion. When people thought about him, if they liked him or they hated him. God elected him, he let him be in there. You know, it, and it is so. But that's when, when your time comes to be a leader, people will do you the same way, a leader or whatever it might be. You don't have to be a leader. It could be at the same thing. Because we have to really just watch what we say. Help God, God guard our tongue. And if you have to go back to this scripture while you're in the middle of it, Man should not live by bread alone, but every word to proceed out the mouth of God. So every word God say, check it first. Lord, what is, okay, what are you saying about this? Before we even say our opinion. Right. What are you saying about this, Master? Yeah. Then make the choice. And it's not hard. It's not really not hard. I know we've been taught so many things for many years, and it's become a habit. It has become tradition. But God is washing away tradition. He is washing it away. He's moving it out the way. One of the things I got for 2023 is uh, this is a year where he told me of the beyond. I know it's past January, but this word for every month of this year, God is going beyond with us. He's going to show us things that we never thought of or never imagined he's going to bless us with things he never thought. And there are things uh, that's going to happen that we never would imagine. But just know this is the year of the beyond. This is the year of breakthrough. This is the year of a of, 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 uh, generation of curses being wiped out. You know what I'm saying? So if, you, if you've been dealing with any of that, just believe that. This is a big year this year. Every year is, uh, and this is the year of reconnection. God is bringing people in the body of Christ back together, no matter what your denomination is. And he's at a point he wants to just get rid of denomination and call it the kingdom of God. So I, when I got up to it earlier, I was going to induce myself, but uh, God had another plan, and I wanted to stay in his plan. Uh, I wasn't, uh, One thing I had said I wasn't going to say is, uh, well, I'm a member of Lighthouse. First thing I thought enough to say is, I'm a member of the body of Christ, but right. I fellowship at Lighthouse. Right. I was going to say that, but the Lord had other plans to God be glory. Yeah. So this is one of the things he want to do this year. He, because he's confirming that he want to reconnect his kingdom, his people. Yeah. If you Baptist, if you uh, uh, Episcopalian, Pentecostal, uh, Methodist, he's not looking at that anymore. He's raising it up. He's putting us together, reconnecting us. So if you end up talking to somebody in the parking lot at Walmart or, or somebody come here from a different church, let them come in and just, just love them. 
There's another one. See what God is doing. How the many manifestations will take place because of the word of the Lord and because of the word of the people. Hallelujah. So we got to really watch what we say this year, too. The diligent shall bear rule. The diligent will bear rule. We have to live a diligent life as well this year. Hallelujah. Uh, the other thing is, this is the year of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Will we allow Jesus to be our shepherd? Will we? That's a choice we have to make. You know, I'm not talking about religion, coming to church every Sunday and Wednesday night Bible study and uh, what's the other one? Uh, 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 a middle of the week, another service during the week, or going to somebody else's church or going to revival. Right. When we make the Lord our lives, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When we when we want nothing but God, we won't want me, we won't need nothing else. Yeah. He, he, he. I'm telling you, this is the Lord, this is your Psalm 23. So when you have time, read Psalm 23. Uh, life will be changed. Uh, new beginnings. Moving forward. Will we move forward? That's one thing. It's different things that we've been through. And uh, we still study it. One thing I've been speaking against on my life is rejection. Uh, I've dealt with that for many years, but that's over for me. I ain't, that, ain't, that ain't in my life. No more. And I'm glad I'm not popular. I thank God I'm not popular. I thank God I, I wasn't on a high class. I'm, I'm glad I was uh, below my, my classmates. I, I, I thank God for that. I thank God I ain't popular. Because the people that I, I've seen, and I could be, I could be wrong, that, 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 that are popular, they got a lot of pressure on them. They got a lot of people relying on them. And uh, I just thank God that I'm available. You know, so I, I, I thank God for that. Eyes will be open this year. He will enlighten and he will refresh in people. Things that are dead will come back to life. And this is something I wrote last year. I didn't want to wait to 23 to write it. I just said, Lord, you give it to me and I'll write it. God will get his revenge. Revenge in his mind says, Lord, I will repay, not us. I know there are some things happening we want to get back. But no. This is a year of double breakthrough. Many will backslide and turn from me. But it's our job to get them back to the Lord through the Holy Spirit. Right. Our hearts will be fashioned and closed, sealed with Jesus Christ. When I say hearts are fastened and closed, we will fasten up and only be with the Lord, one-on-one. -on -one. The God will seal. We will realize God's seal is on us. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. The harvest truly is a plenty, but the labors are few. We have to get back to discipling and Witnessing and bringing people into the uh, Amen. Uh, bringing people into the Lord, not the church, but the Lord, because you are the church. Remember, right. this is a season, a new time. I'm bringing newness to you, and He said that word a lot to me. Newness. Get ready to establish because your heart is in this. You know what I'm saying? So He's gonna prepare our hearts to be in this, and some of our hearts are already in. Hallelujah! His grace is sufficient. The word sufficient means enough. God is more than enough. Let me finish this uh, This uh, Romans 10. It's going to read one more verse. I'll read. Romans 10 and 10 is what I was at. Confession is being made. I'm trying to learn how to you know, not say things, just be saying it. Okay, the 10th verse of Romans 10 and 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if, you, if you've been saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you made confession unto him, you're part of his kingdom. But we're not just talking about that. It's just what I was saying to you earlier. Confession takes place in the mind and the heart. Eventually it comes out of the mouth. So we have to watch what we say no matter what it is. Let's just start practicing on God, you are able to do anything. But let's practice on when somebody come up to us with gossip, turn it into, but you know what? You know how good, uh, or what? you know, she just, she all messed up and stuff. You know, hey, you know what? God is really good, ain't he? Change that conversation. Right. 
God, God uh, he healed my uh, my sister or something. Just change the conversation up. Say, God is so good. He loves you. Sometimes you have to go in and just throw a monkey in the ranch and just cut that negativity out. Right. You don't always have to walk away. You just change the conversation. Well, you know what? This this, this may went bad here, but let's pray about it. Let, let's just pray right now about uh, uh, Sam or Sally or whoever they may be talking about. And it's not always necessarily negativity. Sometimes that news that you look at, because I don't even look at news. Actually, this morning, I got a little bit behind, but I forgot about the time changes. And uh, I got up a little tired this morning. And uh, uh, that just goes to let you know I don't really look at the news. I really don't. I need to look. I needed to see that, though, about the time changing, turn, making the clock go up, go up one hour. But uh, I didn't even see that. But sometimes on the news, it just gets to look at the weather part of it. If you got to look at it and just turn it off. Or just get your phone and look at it. You know, I, I know if I don't watch myself, I be seeing a celebrity that I like, and I start, let me see what they're talking about on this story, and I start scrolling. And really, it's about Jesus. It really ain't about that celebrity. Bless that celebrity, though, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But, you know, we just have to have confession, and we have to make the right choice. Let's just believe God from here on out, and let's move forward. Let's not move backwards. Uh, I just thank God today for this opportunity and this chance to, uh, to, to get up here and give a word today. But God, you remember, confession and choice. You make a confession, but are you making the right choice? This ain't just, this sermon is not just for you, it's for me too, the body of Christ, and the people that's on social media right now. This is, this is for me too. So, just know I'm going to need your prayers because a lot of times you give the word, then you get challenged the next week or so. Yeah, right. But pray to the Lord that I'll be diligent and be disciplined and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and stand up and move forward. Yeah. You know, because uh, I know, I know, it's, and I, I mean, it's the truth. I know I'm probably going to probably get a challenge or may even get hit with something. But I'm still be standing tall, standing out the next if I'm here. The Lord say the same. So to God be the glory, as we Amen. get ready to let us uh, see what Pastor Jim wants to do here. Uh, thank God for the word. Amen. Amen.